The next stage is to install the landing gear. These massive parts have to be unbelievably strong. Not only is the A380 the biggest passenger plane ever built, unfortunately, landing gear in general takes a terrific pounding in the real world. Most landing gear engineers have this low resolution video clip on their computers, a reminder of the extreme conditions that can occur. Heading for the now disused Kai Tak Airport in Hong Kong is a Boeing 747. Approaching in a crosswind, the left hand gear takes the full weight of this huge plane as it hits the tarmac. That such a difficult landing can be successful, as this one was, is an amazing feat of engineering. That gear was made by the Goodrich Corporation, who are also supplying the main landing gear for the A380. Here, near Toronto in Canada, production is well underway and testing is just about to begin. When we have a new landing gear program, we have a lot of tests that we need to do. Strength, performance, dynamics, um, durability. This one is a performance test. This is one of the first tests we do. It's one of the more important tests. It's called a drop test. What it is, is a simulation of landing. Um, so an aircraft lands, uh, an A380 lands, got 560 tons of aircraft moving slowly towards the ground, as well as 200 miles an hour down the runway. When the aircraft hits the ground, something has got to absorb that energy. So if you jump off a chair, you land, your knees have to bend and give a little bit. Even just with the weight of a person, you're going to damage yourself if nothing gives. So that giving of your knees, your legs are absorbing energy. That's what the landing gear has to do, but it has to do it for a set of you know, 180 pounds. It's got to do it for 560 tons. Suspended inside this huge tower, the landing gear is raised in preparation for the drop. The rig is static. So to simulate the approaching ground speed, smaller wheels driven by powerful electric motors spin the big 55-inch tires in the reverse direction. When a switch is flicked in the control room, a hook at the top of the tower will release, allowing the gear to fall. It must absorb the same energy as a 100 mile an hour car crash without being damaged. Although it's huge, this 6.5 ton component is just part of the A380's undercarriage. In total, it will have two six wheel units plus two four wheel units under the wings and a two-wheeled set under the nose. So what you're about to see is only a fraction of the energy involved when the vast machine touches down. well. Early data shows that although there was an unwanted shudder as the wheels came to a halt, the landing gear shrugged off the huge impact with ease. Back at the factory, there's more good news. With the tail cone and dozens of other problems fixed, the first flying A380 is about to leave the main assembly station. For Gilles Cormier, it's a good moment. Maybe we, we forget a little the, the trouble we encountered during the, the past weeks, and now we, we are looking at the, the aircraft itself, the achievement, more than the difficulties we had. Now's the chance to see at last the biggest airliner ever built.
July 2004, and the plane is scheduled to spend the next few months in this massive hall, where thousands of parts will be fitted, including over 500 miles of wiring. The man in charge of this tricky phase is fully aware there's an awful lot of work to do by the end of October. It's a very difficult challenge, very difficult challenge, because it's a prototype, so it's very difficult to, to, to meet uh, our, our deadline. Coming up is August, the traditional holiday month in France, when most of the country shuts down. For Airbus engineers, there will be no holiday. My family are very uh, aware of this uh, personal challenge, so everybody in the family is okay to say, okay, okay, this year, it's the aircraft year. The plane is lifted on huge jacks, and teams of technicians begin work. The plan is for the aircraft to be revealed to the world in a grand ceremony, just 196 days from now. Attending will be heads of state and government, 5,000 guests, and the world's media, with the pictures beamed by satellite all over the world. But just now, this 55-year-old man has a rather special interest in the new machine. Jacques Rosé will be the first person in the world to fly the plane. Seeing it for the first time, his reaction is not exactly what you'd expect. Generally speaking, no, it's, a, it's an aircraft. Larger than uh, the one we have already, but... Um, I think... I feel very, very confident. He's confident because although the plane is still far from finished, he and his team have already spent thousands of hours flying it. Here, in these state-of-the-art simulators, lies the heart and soul of the new plane, already living, already being tested. Like most modern airliners, the A380 has a fly-by-wire system, where the crew, in reality, are controlling a computer, which then controls the plane. You don't realize that you fly such a big aircraft. You, you fly it like you fly a, a, a little aircraft. It's, it's incredible. Uh, it's very, very easy to fly, like a bicycle. It's a kind of large bicycle, if you like. Three, two... The technology means one, they can make it no. handle in almost any way they choose. You could make an airplane that when you turn right goes left, or when you turn left goes right, for example. <laughs> You can do anything. Fernando Alonso will also be on the first flight. Like all Airbus pilots, his first priority is safety, especially if one of the complex systems were to fail. D designing an airplane to work when everything works is relatively easy. It's, it's building the airplane or designing the airplane to work correctly with failures. It's a little bit more difficult. Yes. I, I, I Today, they're pushing the system to the limit. They're testing a scenario so perilous that it's only like to occur once in over a thousand years of flying. Will the plane remain controllable if the wings were covered in ice, two of the engines had failed, and half of the flight computers had gone offline? No. Sang beta, seven, eight, piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. 